Late blight is a disease that's caused by a fungal-like organism called Phytophthora infestans. It's the same uh, pathogen and disease that caused the Irish potato famine in the 1840s. Uh, we see it every year, uh, however it occurs very sporadically. And symptoms develop on the leaves, the stems, the fruit, and the tubers. On the leaves you get a, a pale green to brown lesion that's surrounded by a pale green water-soaked uh, halo. Um, on the underside of the leaf, when you flip it over, you'll start to see some white uh, sporulation, which is the actual fungus, and those spores are what are blown around in the wind, and they can blow around for miles and infect other tomatoes and potatoes far away. Uh, on the stems, you can get kind of a brown, dark brown chocolate type lesion uh, that weakens the stems, and they can break uh, very easily. On the, the fruits, on tomatoes, you can kind of get this greasy, gray-brown kind of lesion that eventually will cover the entire fruit. On potatoes, you can kind of, you get a, a roughened uh, brown lesion, and then when you cut through the potato perpendicularly, you'll get a reddish-brown kind of grainy, gritty uh, lesion on the inside. The recommendation uh, is not to eat that, not to eat that fruit. And you definitely don't want to process it for canning. I know the temptation's there uh, to want to continue and process it, uh, but it's not recommended because you can get a lot of secondary organisms in there that can cause problems. The first is that we saw symptoms much earlier in the season than we usually do. Uh, we had our first report of late blight on tomato from a home garden in uh, June 18th of this year when typically we don't see it until August or September, uh, if at all. Um, the other reason we saw a lot of late blight this year was the weather conditions. It was ideal for the pathogen. It was cool and wet and that those cool wet conditions persisted throughout uh, the season. Uh, they, and it encouraged the, the disease to, to spread. Um, the other reason that late blight was a problem is we, we did find it in a lot of trans, tomato transplants that were sold at large uh, retail outlets. As soon as we confirmed the first case of late blight in the state in mid-June, uh, we quickly acted and sent out disease alerts across the state uh, to try and alert the growers and county educators that we did indeed confirm late blight. We worked to maintain a map and update it to let people know where we did find late blight across the state. We then also uh, worked with Penn or Pennsylvania uh, Department of Ag inspectors to look at retail stores for where we had uh, seen infected tomato transplants to get those removed from the shelves um, and also had them inspect uh, production facilities. The most important thing for this upcoming season is going to be to make sure that all tomato and potato plants from 2009 are dead. This includes any plants that you may have thrown on top of your compost pile or any potato tubers that may have been left in the ground that were infected with late blight. Make sure that you always plant disease-free transplants. So when you buy your transplants, look them over and make sure that they look healthy and green. It's also going to be important to minimize any kind of overhead irrigation. This is true not just for late blight, but for a number of other diseases uh, that can infect tomatoes. So water the plants from the ground, uh, either using drip tape or using a watering can, and also spread your plants out. Anything you can do to increase air circulation around your garden will help minimize leaf wetness and help reduce diseases such as late blight.